Okay, this is part two of the dinosaur game tutorial. Um, we already have it where you can uh, jump. We just need to add some objects that fly towards this guy that he has to jump over. Okay, so that's what we'll do in part two. And to do that, let's just set up an interval that uh, moves things at a constant pace from right to left. So let's go back to our editor. And the easiest way for us to just test this is to have an onload function. So we can say window.onload equals function. And we're going to need a function that will spawn an object and start it moving towards us. So let's just call that function spawn object, or let's call it obstacle. And then create that function function spawn obstacle and let's start by just creating another div here but we'll do it dynamically this time instead of doing it using the HTML like we did down here we're going to create an element using JavaScript so let's say var new obstacle equals document dot element will be a div element just like this one and we need to start giving it some styling so let's say new obstacle dot style dot background color equals and we can make this yellow for now and let's make the height and width Uh, I don't know. Let's just make it the same height and width. So this is 5%, 5%. So height equals 5%. And width also equals 5%. Okay, and then also position needs to be absolute. And the actual x and y coordinates of this we can define using the top and left attributes. So top is going to be a constant. These are always going to be the same distance from the top of the screen. And the ground is at 50%. So let's do, I guess we should do 40% or 45%, uh, just like that dinosaur. So 45% and let's add it to the page and then test it. So we have to say document.body.appendChild and then new obstacle. Okay, let's just test it for now and it puts it right there. Um, we didn't define its left attribute yet. Let's say left, let's just start it out off the screen. So that would be like 100% or anything above 100% would mean it would spawn beyond the length of the window. So let's say new obstacle dot style dot left equals 100%. Okay. So we don't see it because it's all the way off the screen for now. Um, but let's set up a timer for this object. Let's say set interval function and we need to change its position. So uh, let's just create a variable for this obstacle that represents its x position. So obstacle x equals 100 for the starters, that's 100%. And then we'll just decrease that every step. We'll say uh, obstacle x minus equals 1. And then we'll just change its styling to be that obstacle x inside of this interval. So left equals obstacle x plus that percent. Um, last thing we actually have to do, I forgot, we need to say how often this interval repeats. So 10 milliseconds sounds good to me. Let's just test this. Okay. 
So we have the object moving towards us, and we have the ability to jump. Um, the problem is, as you can see, it only sends one object. If I refresh the page, it starts over, but that's it. It's one and done. Uh, so we need to make this repeat, and instead of using a loop, we're actually going to do something a little bit more beyond what a beginning programming class would even talk about, but it's relevant, so I'm going to talk to you about it right now. It's called recursion. So recursion is where a process spawns another process of itself. In this case, we're going to use this function called spawn obstacle to call itself. We're going to say after a certain amount of time, let's call this function again. And for now, let's just make it a set amount of time. So we'll say set timeout function, and then every two seconds. We'll say as soon as this obstacle has been alive for two seconds, it will then call the same function in order to create another obstacle. So let's test that out. So every two seconds, we should see another one. And it seems to be getting faster and faster for some reason. And I just realized the reason for that is because I forgot to make this a local variable. So I didn't have the word var in front, so it assumed that this variable was going to be used by any process throughout this whole script. So if I say var, then that means we're going to use a new variable for this particular instance, for this particular obstacle. So every single one that gets created has its own process. So now when I run it, you'll notice it doesn't speed up to uh, unmanageable speeds like that. Of course, we do want it to speed up, but not quite that fast. So, uh, so let's add a little bit of randomness to this. Right now, it's just always going every two seconds. Let's make it so it has a range of time where it could spawn anywhere between like two seconds and three seconds, maybe. So let's say um, respawn time, and let's create that variable right here. We'll say var respawn time equals math.random multiplied by 2,000. Um, and that will give us a range of 2,000 milliseconds, and then our base value, let's say just one second, so, or you know what, let's say like half a second. It's possible that they could come every half second, but that's, it's going to be a little random. So this one came a little faster, this one waiting a little bit longer, faster. So we shouldn't see anything that's too close together because they'll at least be half a second apart. But yeah, we introduced a little bit more variability in that. That's good. Now, the only other thing we need to do in this part is to make them get faster and faster. So how do we do that? Well, one easy way is to keep track of how many objects have already spawned. And then each time, like every 10 objects that spawn, we increase their speed a little bit. So let's try that. We'll say var num obstacles spawned. It starts out as zero, and then anytime this function is called, we increase that number. Plus equals one. And then right down here, this is how fast the object is moving. This is, it says it moves at one pixel every hundredth of a second. So we can make that get a little bit faster and faster by increasing the number of pixels that it will move. Um, so instead of saying just minus equals 1, let's say minus equals game speed. And I haven't created that variable yet. Let's do that up here. We'll start it out as var game speed equals 1. And then right here, let's just say every 10 objects, it increases its speed just a little bit. So let's say if num obstacles mod 10 is equal to zero. That means that we've seen 10 objects. We will increase the speed. We're going to say game speed uh, multiply equals 1.1. So it'll get a little bit bigger. It'll add 10% to its speed each time. Let's see if that's presented. 
and I forgot to spell that correctly. It's actually called an obstacle spawned. Let's try that. So we get two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it should be moving a little faster now. And it's kind of hard to tell if they're speeding up, so let's make it more drastic in the beginning. Let's try making them double their speed every time. As soon as we've seen 10, it should go twice as fast. Actually, it started out twice as fast because the very first iteration is a multiple of 10. So let's have it start out at 1. That way, 9 objects have to pass first. Okay, 2, 3, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and now we should see them faster. Yep. So it is speeding up. And obviously multiplying it by two every time we see ten objects is gonna start getting really fast. Um, when we get to twenty, we'll see how fast that goes. There it is. <laughs> Um, and you'll notice the gap between them is still pretty similar. It's pretty consistent. So we need to also decrease the length of time between spawning as we go further. So if we can somehow use the game speed to our advantage in the respawn time. Let's see if we can just divide this 2000 by game speed. So now it'll be a smaller number um, the longer this goes. So it'll be a smaller amount of milliseconds it waits before it spawns another object. So once we've seen 9, of course, it's going to double its speed, and it should reduce the amount of time between as well. And of course, it is still very much unmanageable. So let's change it back to 1.1. 1. 1. Uh, 1.2 maybe. Nine. So now it should be a little faster. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Oops, it's getting really fast. So you can, of course, edit these numbers, make it as challenging as you want. Try to find the perfect difficulty. You don't want it to become too fast too quickly. So 1.1 is probably a pretty good acceleration rate. So we have successfully made objects move toward the controllable object, our dinosaur, and they get faster and faster.